Welcome everybody to Hope for Our Times. And today I have a very special guest that's joining me. We're going to be getting into a preview of things to come uh, in just a minute. Uh, she really doesn't need any introduction, but I'm going to do one anyway. So Jan Markell is the founder and president of Olive Tree Ministries, a Christian ministry helping Christians see current events through the lens of the Bible. It's also a discernment ministry and encourages Christians to contend for their faith. Jan is the author of eight books and a producer of 11 DVDs. Uh, she has an active web ministry, as many of you already know, a print newsletter, e-newsletter, which is such a blessing uh, to so many people worldwide, including myself. In the year 2000, she launched a radio branch of uh, the ministry starting in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then in 2004, the program was syndicated nationally and is heard internationally on the internet. Understanding the Times Radio looks at news and views from a biblical perspective and also focuses on discernment issues for the church. And the program is now heard on over 850 stations across the United States. Jan, thank you for joining me. Well, Tom, thank you for having me. It's honest. It's really an honor. Oh, this is great. You've been such a blessing to so many for so long, and uh, it's always good to have you on here. You're not on here very often, but I appreciate your taking the time out to be here with me. Absolutely. I love meeting your people in uh, 2020, I think it was, um, filling your pulpit on a Sunday night. So, yeah, I've heard from them since then, too. Well, I'm looking forward to more of that also. So we'll talk about that later, too. Sure. Uh, so you wrote a, a newsletter recently in your Understanding the Times uh, that you regularly put out. And I want to go through a few things because I personally sure. think people need to hear this. And uh, what, what's really going on? So uh, one of them, uh, just in the very beginning, you talk about a preview of things to come. And uh, you were talking about Lahaina and Maui, and you said some things that I really think are profound. Uh, you wrote, the word apocalyptic is being used all over the world as the planet groans awaiting the liberation of Jesus Christ when he will set it free. Elsewhere in Europe, a month of rain fell on parts of yeah. Slovenia in a single day. China experienced devastating floods. Crops throughout the region were completely wiped out, and the property damage that has been done is off the charge. Uh, and then you continue through various things, and then you said this and much more as we are in a run-up to the rapture, the ultimate apocalyptic event. Jan, I, I, I want to look at this because uh, I think what you wrote is so spot on. And hopefully people will wake up that are that are not awake yet. Well, the birth pangs are happening. I mean, we know that they've lost some really in the tribulation, but nobody can tell me that God is not sending, well, some tremendous events, most of them tragic, um, as a warning that, you know, time is running out, that, uh, I mean, the, the king is coming and, and, and he's trying to signal that we may be running out of time, the church may be running out of time, and unbelievers may be running out of time to come to faith. So it's sad that these events, and I use the word apocalyptic, have to be so apocalyptic, but honestly, does anything else get anybody's attention? No. Nothing else does. In fact, people don't pay really any attention to good news. They only uh, get their attention when something bad is happening. When, when uh, people cry out to God when they've got bad news, whether it That's be a right. sickness or financial calamity or, what, or their marriage is falling apart, they tend to cry out to right. God at that point. You remember back 9-11, I remember it well, yeah. when uh, we have this, the, the World Trade Centers and the, you know, the, the planes hitting the World Trade Centers and so forth. Jan, I remember it clearly. I taught a prophecy Bible study that Friday night. So it would have been just a few days later, yes. 2001. And uh, we remember seeing Congress, both sides of the altar, getting along right, together right. for a couple days. And in that, I, I, I remember telling people, so this is what, 13, uh, 12 years, uh, 20, what, 22 years ago. And Looking at it, I remember telling the people, I said, hey, this is going to change the world forever. What we saw happen, exactly. it's gonna, I talked about our freedoms are going to be eliminated and so forth. And we've watched uh, all kinds of events change ever since. Travel's not the same, but 
Um, different laws, many laws have been passed to really bring about, as we're going forward with a global government, which right. the Bible talks about. But getting back to the apocalyptic events, we saw that, but lawlessness will abound. Um, and you even put in your newsletter about this. You said during the seven-year tribulation, every city and nation will look like Maui. Can you imagine? I cannot. I can't imagine, Tom. Yeah. I can't. And I don't want to. I mean, I'm thankful I won't be here, but I grieve for those who will be left here. Now, granted, some are very evil people, but others simply don't know that, who knows, maybe they grew up in a faith that they didn't have to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. And and as a result, here they are stuck in this terrible tribulation. And they may not be terribly wicked people, but they weren't believers. And I, my heart grieves for them. Just And so many will come to faith, thankfully. Yeah, which is, which is the reason for the importance of your ministry. And this one also is we need to share the truth of Christ with people because after the, tribul- after the rapture happens, um, people are going to come to know Christ. And I believe it's going to be yep. through programs like this and the faithful sharing yes. Jesus with other people. They're going to wake up. Well, and in the meantime, we use the beast system to get get the good news out. And I mean, there's coming a time when the beast system won't be there for for us. Hopefully, we'll be gone. But but um, we're using it to to get the good news out, the gospel out, and 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 warn people. Time's running out. Yeah, uh, Jen, you mentioned birth pangs and all the events that we see taking place right now in Lahaina. And when yeah. I think of Revelation chapter six, uh, we have the rider on the white horse. Uh, you fast forward from the rider on the white horse, which goes about conquering to conquer. Then you have the red horse, which is really, it's apocalyptic war, a great sword. It's, it's going to be massive war. Then the black horse, which to me represents yep. economic catastrophe and, uh, and famine, a, a day's wage for a loaf of bread. You enter in the pale horse, the fourth seal, fourth horseman of the apocalypse, and we have a death by pestilence, death by war, death by famine, death by all of the above. And really, it's like if you look at everything right now that's taking place, it looks uh, like uh, all of these things are set up for a great war, for great economic catastrophe, uh, for what it, the death that's going to come by the third, the fourth horse of the apocalypse. And again, you know, when, when they start putting these different things together, um, you, you, know, you look at it and you go, how much longer, Lord? I mean, it, I exactly. mean, sometimes it's, you know, you're, you, 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 please come quickly, Lord Jesus. I mean, I say that a lot. I, I think that the, the, the saying that I hear a lot of my colleagues uh, verbalize almost every day is, why are we still here? Uh, which, of course, is, is some fodder for uh, mid- and post-tribulation people to say, well, see, you thought you'd be gone, you'd miss all, all this. Well, we do miss the ultimate, but no, we're going through the early stages of the birth pangs. We just miss the final, you know, tornado and, 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 and hurricane. We, we're going to miss all that. But, but God is allowing these things, including Lahaina, and I'm, I'm just particularly... Uh, devastated by what happened um, in in Maui now, well, some time ago, a few weeks ago, anyway. I, I'm just devastated, but but I think that that was a a run up uh, to the rapture, a run up to the tribulation. Again, as I said earlier, it's a warning. It's a warning of things to come. It's a preview of things to come. And as you rightly said, as we were opening, my goodness, um, r- imagine a Maui, imagine Lahaina in in three dozen cities of the world and maybe ten thousand cities in the world i don't even want to think about it but again don't delay that decision lord uh, uh, people please uh, turn your hearts to the lord while there's time you know, wh- while there's still time um you in your newsletter you also talked about rapture fatigue which i want to get yeah. to yeah. In, in a minute because we are hearing it there's there's more and more scoffers who say, hey, you know, right. where's the promise of his coming? You guys have always been saying this. Uh, they, they say what we're talking about is nonsense. But, I mean, you look at this, it's like, how can people not see it when we know the accuracy of all of the prophecies in the Bible uh, from all things past, 100%. God's never missed. He's always right, always going to be correct. 
and we see everything developing just as the Bible says they would, including the words of Jesus himself, we can tell. It's like you, you, you look at you, how can you not see these things? Then I think of the words of Daniel where the angel tells him, hey, the wicked will see it and will not understand, but the wise will understand. Wise. And we kind of yeah. see that happening. Um, I, I put the, the wicked and the wise in that category of Daniel 12 is the wicked would fall into the group of those who reject God, who don't want to know him. Um, and the wise are those who are willing to search the scriptures to say, mm. hey, what's going on here? But it also implies to me that both sets of people, in other words, everybody on the planet is going to know we've entered into a very different time, but so many are unwilling to look at it. And again, you just look at all of these things, you put them together. I mean, you listed several different things in your newsletter. Yeah. I would encourage everybody to get it if you haven't yet. You can subscribe to Jan's newsletter. But I mean, what are, do you have any thoughts on that with Daniel chapter 12? Well, I think I think the little sentence there that the wise will understand is, is intriguing to say the least. Um, just what does it mean that the uh, are you and I wise? I don't think we're any more wise than anybody. But I think what we have, Tom, I think what we have is some biblical understanding and and biblical insight. And I think we're called as watchmen, you and I, and many others. Um, as a warning to the world that um, life as we know it, as outlined in the Bible, life as we know it will come to an end sooner rather than later. And here's what you can watch for, and here's how you can prepare. You've got to prepare spiritually mainly. Some people want to prepare physically, and that's fine. Um, but I say prepare spiritually because it's coming, folks. It's coming. Now, how much more are we going to see? Boy, that is a million-dollar question. I never thought I'd see some things I'm seeing today. Never thought I would. Never. Yeah. Um, you, you've coined a few phrases that I've used many times. Uh, one of them is, you, I remember I was with you in Minnesota, and you had mentioned this. Yeah. You were in a conversation with somebody, and they were talking about all the different things that are going on. And this goes back a couple of years. And you said to him, well, what did you expect the last days to look exactly. like? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you look at this and Jesus did tell us, I like you. I, there's things that have happened in the last few years I didn't, I never really thought we would see. But now it makes a lot more sense that we are seeing them. I believe that Satan wants to have his beast system built before Antichrist seizes his throne yeah. simply because I don't think Satan's going to waste any time building infrastructure. So he's going to use the Bill Gates and the rest of them to build exactly. it. So I think that's what we're seeing. So you see similar. You, you we're watching similar. the beast system go up faster than we ever could have imagined. Yeah. And it's happening really rapidly. Um, it's stunning. It's both discouraging and encouraging. I think it's it's discouraging because it's so evil. It's encouraging because it's a reminder the king is coming. Hold on a little bit longer. And and um, I, I think there are many good things happening at the same time. So I think what believers need to do today is, look, how many Maui's can we look at and not be completely devastated? How can we not see that situation and our hearts break for what's been going on there? But at the same time, God's going to give us some encouragement along the way as well. And uh, I'm encouraged by the number of people I'm seeing wake up. Is it a mass revival? No, I think that happens in the tribulation, but I'm seeing enough people. They're writing my ministry and saying, Jan, where can I find a church that teaches like you and Tom Hughes and so many of the others that we've been tapping into, Billy Crone and Brandon, how, where can I find that church? Sadly, some will say I visited every church in my town and, and it comes up so short, uh, which is tragic. But again, what is the last day's apostasy? Not revival, but apostasy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Did you ever expect to see it like it is? No. But, you know, you know, it's very interesting. There's so much more clarity, I think, for us now. As we see certain things, they're, they're go, okay, that makes sense to me now. Didn't make sense before. I mean, I can give you several different passages that bring clarity which uh, one of them would be First Timothy chapter four. In the latter times, uh, they'll depart from the faith, uh, uh, yeah, bringing in doctrines right. of demons, deceiving spirits, commanding that you don't eat meat. 
you know, or meats or foods that God has created to be received with thanksgiving. I never understood what that meant before, but now we hear about, well, you're going to have to eat bugs. I mean, all these crazy yeah, things you're going to have to do. True. So we have that's more true. clarity. And one of the things we have more clarity on now is, wow, we're, we are seeing the beast system built. We can see how they're actually building it too. We couldn't have seen as much five years ago. Uh, no, we, no. Now, they're, now they're telling us, but doesn't this also fit with Daniel 12 where Daniel 12, in Daniel, he's looking for an understanding of his vision. Uh, the angel says, that's not for you. Seal it up until the time of the end. It's for those people that are living at that time. So the, the understanding I've always had from Daniel 12 is the closer you get to the tribulation, the more clear the event, the more, the, right. the more clarity we will have. And I think that's what's happening. And also, Jan, I mean, I'm seeing people on the, that I would have considered them pretty radical left a while back that are actually starting to question uh, what in the world's going on. I mean, see Joe Rogan questioning. You know, yeah, he's, there you go. He's starting to talk about the mark of the beast. Um, mm. I think, I, I hope he buys my book. Um, yes, exactly. But, but I mean, I, so you, you, I, I look at this and it's, it's, it's amazing to watch these things but would you say we, we have more clarity because we're getting closer to that so, and we're searching the scripture? And I think God is opening the eyes of a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think some, I mean, depending on, I think your thirst, he's gonna give you some insights to better understand the times, contend for the faith, be watchman on the wall. Uh, but you know, Tom, that's one reason, I mean, for your program, for instance, is, is so crucial right now. And thankfully there are, there are several others going out into the airwaves as we speak. And you got your call for such a time as this, really. Yep. Don't grow weary in, <laughs> in well-doing. You know, I, there, there is those times, aren't there? I mean, you've done this yeah, a lot longer than me, but there are those times. Jan, how can people connect with you? Olive Tree Views? OliveTreeViews.org would be the best way, I, I think. Um, we air now on about a 1,000 radio stations. It can go to my website and go to radio. Um, and then we have a large uh, online connection as well. Um, YouTube and all the other Rumble website, uh, his channel, oneplace.com. So we're trying to get, we're trying to, we're trying to, um, we're trying to seize the moment. And I think that the moment for getting the glorious news that the King is coming, not just any day, but any minute, I, I, I just think that is crucial right now. So nobody can say they weren't warned, but then even more important than being warned is acting on what's what we're suggesting, which is to name the Lord Jesus Christ as King of Kings of your life. And you have a glorious future, folks. If you don't do that, it's not so hot. Uh, absolutely, definitely need to. And that window of opportunity, I believe, is closing and closing rapidly. It's closing. Yeah, it's we're, closing. We're watching the Di Digital Services Act. There's been a lot that's come out in the news over the last few uh, last few weeks. And we are watching. They're closing on the Internet. Uh, these things are going to be more and more difficult to share. But we're going to press forward. Right. Like you, Jana, you're such an encourager. Make sure that you connect with Jan. You have her information there. Uh, in the in the links, you can see them, and in the description. Jan, you posted this. You reposted it recently. Larry Fink, good old Larry Fink, BlackRock. Yeah, BlackRock. Uh, you have to, and I, I've seen this video so many times, but you have it right here. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. If you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, you're going to be impacted. So forcing these things. So we're watching wokeism. We're watching all these changes. They are forcing it. They're stepping up the pressure against everybody. But this is what they're doing. They want to conform everybody to their image, what they want you to be. And it certainly is not God on the throne. Oh, they hate God on the throne. They are, God is their, their bitter, bitter enemy. Yet he's, he's so patient and he's waiting for those very people who hate him the BlackRock and, and all the other world government people, he's waiting for them to just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, and he will save them instantly. So let's keep pre presenting that message. And, and we've got people like that even listening. I know I do, and I know you do. Um, and God's going to direct them to listen at the exact right time. 
Yeah, and you know, and they have, you know, really God's desires at Nunchi Parish, as you mentioned, and they have no idea what awaits for them in eternity. People have this idea, well, if there's a hell, I'm going to be friends with the devil, I'll be serving right. in his kingdom, and it's going to be great because I'll be there with my buddies. It won't be like that. There's absence of all, God is he's absent from that. So you have no joy, you have no love, you have no peace, there's no happiness. You you can't even joke around with your friends. You aren't going to feel any emotions that are going to be pleasant. There will be nothing good for all of eternity. It'll be it'll be suffering beyond anything we can imagine. And this is part of the reason for the tribulation, God's judgment of sin, but at the same time as you mentioned to wake up people and and even these things, like you said, Lahaina, which is an absolute tragedy, it's horrific. I think it's uh, absolutely horrible. And, and the response from the government of the U.S. has been horrible. That's a whole other story. It, it is. But um, as you said, imagine that times, you know, so many more, 10,000 times in the tribulation. God is trying to wake up people and uh, praise God for the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope for our times. Amen. Uh, um, you you mentioned paganism in Hawaii too, Jan, in yeah. your newsletter. Uh, what what are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm really burdened by that because Hawaii is um, not every, not everyone, but Hawaii is a bit of a pagan pagan gods. Um, they worship the water. The gentleman who was in charge of releasing the water, and he didn't. And he, he, I believe somebody like he, somebody like him, I can't, uh, Manuel is either his first or last name. Um, they, they are value, valuing water more than life, which is shocking, shocking. And I might expect that in some deepest, darkest jungle of some remote, remote country. This is one of our 50 states, Hawaii. And yet we have a pagan mindset that we have to worship the water. So we're not going to release it, even though fire is already going, already accelerating, unprecedented accelerating, and he wouldn't release the water. And it's what happens when you don't value life. You don't value the people that live in your state or in your country. And as many as a thousand, and maybe two thousand. I don't know that we'll ever know, Tom. I don't know that we'll ever know, but certainly a thousand perished. And, and, and my goodness, the situation under which they perished is unthinkable. Talk about the fires and the flames of hell, and that's what these people had to go through. Um, hopefully, they had a relationship with the Lord Jesus, so that in their eternity, they can forget about all this. But my concern is because it's a bit, bit of a pagan culture. And thank God for the churches, including Calvary Chapel over there. And I play a clip uh, from the Calvary Chapel over there, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend. Um, but thank God the, the gospel is going out. I, I just pray it's being received in time because these people didn't respond in time. Yeah. Uh, such a heartbreaker. Jan, with all the things that we talk about, you you do, I do, we have guests, we speak at different places yeah. and pretty much all week. Um, how do you find hope? And, you know, I look at the people who, people watching, they, they, you know, maybe they're missing the connection or unable to have the right perspective. How do you find hope? Well, I think I started um, watching the Times. Um, Hal Lindsey's Late Great Planet influenced me, you know, in the late 1970s, and more than it influenced me, changed my life. I'm blessed to have grown up in a very Bible preaching, <clears throat> prophecy preaching church. And as a teenager and a young adult, I didn't know how important that was. I just took it for granted. And now I hear from people every day, my church doesn't do this. And my church scoffs at what we're talking about. And my church doesn't even preach much of the gospel or it's a social gospel preaching church. So I had the privilege of that Bible uh, background. If, and I am so thankful. I am so thankful they helped me understand the times and contend for the faith before I was even 20 years old. So I am encouraged that, Tom, you and I, dare I, dare I say that we are a privileged generation. You and I are seeing things that the prophets of old would have loved to have seen 
2,000 and 4,000 years ago, and we're seeing them on a daily basis. And too much of the world is saying, ho hum, I'm too busy to pay much attention. And my goodness, what they're missing, they're missing hope. They're missing hope for our times. And that's what we have because of our biblical perspective. And that's what we have because you and I are engaged right now in getting the good news to the masses. At the same time, you and I have a lot of uh, satanic pushback. Uh, yeah, yes, there is, even <laughs> from people who would claim to be Christians, too. Sure. Um, it was, was a couple of interesting things there, Jan. It was Hal Lindsey's late great planet Earth that also grabbed my attention. I, did, I went and saw there's a, a movie about it, and I remember going and watching the movie, totally grabbed my attention. I didn't yeah. get saved for a few more years after that, but that was planted in my brain. I right. got saved, went to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, which at the time was Pastor Chuck Smith. He talked about prophecy a lot, talking right. about Israel. So that was my beginning. The plant with Hal Lindsey, I get saved, and then hearing Pastor Chuck, and, and uh, you know, that, that was, it was God's plan. And, and yet we, we know it is. And then when you look at what is happening, and I think of in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus comes the first time. He's talking with the religious leaders. And he says, hey, you guys know the word. You know, you you should know that right. it's the time of my appearance. All they had to do was look at the book of Daniel, the writings of Daniel, and recognize, hey, there's going to be uh, 483 years from right. the command to go and build the wall until his appearance, when the Messiah would be cut off. So they, knowing the prophetic word, would have been able to calculate and go, the Messiah should be here right about now. But they ignored it. The same thing is happening today within the church where so many pastors, I mean, all the different signs, the hundreds of signs of right. Christ's second hundreds. coming, it's like, how can you miss them? If you just pick up the Bible and are willing to admit, it says it, but the same mindset has infected the Christian church pastor that infected the religious leaders of the it's law true. in the days of Jesus. With that, Jan, you wrote about rapture fatigue. Yeah. And, and you, you made this statement uh, after you're talking about the late great planet Earth, uh, you called the next section in your newsletter. Again, I encourage everybody to get Jan's newsletter uh, for, from all of Tree Views. Late great burnout. Recently, I read a revealing article in The Guardian that further mocks those with an end time view and reinforces the growing skepticism. This article suggests that authors like Tim LaHaye, Hal Lindsey, and others have prophes uh, prophesied a lot of things that have not come to pass. Haven't you rapture watchers waited long enough? Perhaps it's time to move on from this message. And then you wrote, never mind that a ton of things they predicted yeah, have, come, have to. come to pass. Yeah. And we are watching these things. It's, it's, it's amazing, but, but we are hearing this. And a lot of it, Jan, is from people who would say they're a Christian or a churchgoer or something. Well, and I exactly, and I'm hearing from people who have rapture fatigue. They've waited and they watched, and and is Jesus ever going to come back? How about my lifetime? Hang on is all I can say. But there is a there is a form of burnout. I mean, um, back in the 1970s, there was a song. Um, I wish we'd all been ready. Life was filled with guns and war. Well, nothing's changed. What is it? 40 to 50 years later, life is still filled with guns and war and everyone got trampled on the floor. It's still happening. Um, but my goodness, this is a lead up to the run up to the king is coming. So hold on a little longer. Honestly, um, I never thought I'd be here seeing the things I'm seeing, but it, it, for some reason, Tom, we got to keep sounding sounding the shofar. We got to keep uh, be, being watchmen on the wall. And I think more than ever today, we have to keep encouraging. There's enough bad news out there. We can look at, again, we can look at all the signs at the times. They're heavily negative. Apostasy in the church, global government, cashless society on the horizon. I could go on and on and on. Uh, birth pangs out of control maui i could i could list 20 things 30 things let's we can watch those but let's keep in mind that god is sending us a warning 
I am coming soon. Hold on a little bit longer and don't fall into the rapture fatigue. Don't fall into the mindset that said, ah, come on, I've waited forever. It's never going to happen. And some are doing that. They, some are giving, not just giving up end times, they're giving up the faith. So that's why we got to keep encouraging and encourage, offering hope, offering the positive perspective that, look, why were we born for such a time as this? Why? Why are, why are your listeners born for such a time as this? And then given the insight, when half of their acquaintances, even family members, don't get it, they don't understand. Well, here we are. We can give them the good news. We can give them, we can give them the whole run-up of things to come. Um, let's do it. Don't hold back, folks. Don't hold back. The king is coming perhaps today. Yep. Uh, perhaps today he's coming, you know, and... But what if it's not for five more years, everyone? You know, and that's where we need to we need to be strong in the Lord and recognize again, as Jam said in the very beginning, God's desire is that none should perish. Now, I mean, I'm hoping it's today. I hope we get I'm called just, home maybe. at any moment, man. That the, we hear the words of Jesus, come up here, and we be in His presence. But our focus needs to be on Jesus Christ. We have the blessed hope. And the more we draw, the, the the closer we get to that time, and the more we tell others about this, the more right. mocking is going to come, the more scoffing is going to come. Chan, I was uh, I, I gave a message. It was a while back, just a video, one of my weekly videos, and it, the topic was on uh, one of the signs being that many will be offended. Jesus said because of me, and so I said, look, everybody gets offended now, offended over this, offended over that. There was an article in a UK tabloid that said, you know, it was some crazy doomsday, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, they, and they were offended that I said they'd be offended. I mean, they made the case right there of, of it. And so don't get discouraged, everyone. It, it's like these are all signs that Jesus told us these things are yeah. going to happen. Don't worry about the, the mocking, the scoffing. You keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. He is our hope. And we remember, man, our citizenship is in yeah. heaven. So we're, and also remember this, everyone, we're running a race. Um, we're, it, it, Jan, I, I've used this analogy several times, that the Apostle Paul, he used running the race as an analogy in the Christian race. And I said, you know, if you look at the Olympics, when the people are making the final turn and they see the finish line, Mm -hmm. None of them quit. Even the one who's in last right, place right, right. is running harder than he ever did before in right. the whole in the whole race. Um, every single one of them is, and that's how it is right now, folks. It's we can see the finish line. You don't pull up a chair. You don't quit. You're faithful to the Lord. You run as if you're going to get the prize. And so, folks, we can see the finish line. These, these, we can. These signs are everywhere. We can. And, and I think that, Tom, is is the real tragedy of, of the apostasy of our day is, is um, not only is the church steeped into some false doctrine, not all, of course, but um, the, the, the false teaching out there is just legion. But at the same time, they're going to mock people like you and me, and they're going to mock anybody with an end time view because they just the seminaries haven't trained the pastors to understand these things anymore. And so you and I become become a laughing stock, which you know that's fine. I, I I don't care, but it discourages people from from sounding the alarm, and I think that's what's tragic. Yeah, it it does. Uh, Jan, you wrote also in your news article again. I encourage everybody to get it uh, about the Walker Art Center summoning yeah. up demons. I'm I'm going to ask you this. In that, I mean, I look at that. It's it's pretty unbelievable to watch it, but. I, I, w I would ask you this, um, what would you say is the most underrated issue we are facing today when you look at prophetic things? Is it the, the demon type of things or is it the, the, the apostasy or, um, I, I mean, there's so many different things we could think of. Do you have one in particular that stands out? Well, the rise of darkness is is a huge one, and they they might not know the Walker Art Center had a, a class. It was back on um, back uh, late summer uh, class at the Walker, which is inter internationally known Walker Art Center. 
they had a class to teach kids, little four or five year olds, how to summon up the demons. I don't think I ever thought that the world of the paranormal would get this bold and blatant and dark to have a class at a well-respected art art center, the Walker Art Center, where you're teaching kids how to summon demons. I think another one that is underrated is the fact that central bank digital currency is on the horizon. It will be here, I believe, in 2023. That really means a cashless society starting whenever that lands and and, and is implemented. Uh, CBDCs get familiar with the term. Um, and then I think lastly, because it'd be a tie there, uh, would be the the exponential rise and influence of artificial intelligence because again antichrist has to have a a a a working system in the tribulation and i believe it'll be ai driven and and all of this is setting the stage for the tribulation it's a run-up to the rapture and then a run-up to the tribulation we have a front row seat to watch it all happen as we speak but i i think those things that, that rise of darkness the the racing ahead of central bank digital currency and the rise of ai could be three top three of ten anyway yeah it is amazing when you look back over the years just if you just go back five years you'd prepare for something like a, a prophecy update. You would scour the news, maybe have some some help with people getting you a few things that were topics you needed to bring up. Now it, it's every day. And yeah. you know, this the AI, th those two things alone, the AI and uh, digital currency, it's, it's almost, for me, it's like, how can somebody not see? I know the system of the beast. And as we mentioned earlier, even Joe Rogan can see it, Right. you know? So, and he's connecting these dots. Um, the Bible told us this. How could the Bible have possibly known this? Well, it's the Lord who told us this is what they are going to do. And Satan himself through Antichrist wants to seem omniscient, omnipotent. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and you, this gives him that ability, AI. And then the power of digital currency, um, you know, we, we've been, we have Bitcoin, but Bitcoin as we know it is not going to be it. It's going to be a centralized right. digital currency. Right, centralized, that, right. That, uh, Jan, w when I think of um, this global system being built, we know there's, uh, the Bible talks about 10 kings, and then they're going to give their power and authority to the one who is the beast. Um, I don't I mean, I really wonder, I mean, the, this whole 10 king system is what it appears to me is, is really the beast system that's being built. Exactly what the 10 kings are, who they'll be, I don't know, but I think that's what, the, what we're watching shape up right now. Well, then do you feel they will come out of Europe? I feel, I, I, I tend to take the, the position of J. Vernon McGee, where okay. I believe it's a global system. All right, um, global, sure. And, and, um, but it's headquartered in Europe. I, I, I have no doubt about that because I firmly believe Antichrist is of the people who destroyed the city. Uh, yeah. His ethnicity is given to us, I believe, in Daniel chapter 9. So he's going to be of those people. That people group, I believe it's going to be out of Europe. Um, and and loc that, that'll be the central location, the head. Uh, so run from there. And we do see these European globalists that seem right, to be... Right really running a whole lot of what's happening here in America. And, and some are very suspicious, yes. Oh, uh, they are. Uh, they are indeed. Jan, so you've been doing this a long time. God has blessed you uh, with a, a, a fabulous uh, ministry. Um, been, I'm going to say this. Pretend I'm a long-lost friend. Uh, what would you say to me? If uh, just looking at everything, I don't know Jesus. What would you say? What would you say to me? I would say that eternity is a very long time uh, spent in the right place in eternity with with God. It's going to be glorious. But but Tom, can you imagine spending eternity that's without end? Try to wrap your brain around without end, without end, in endless suffering. And that's why we're doing what we do. That's why we. We don't have a ministry to become known. We don't have a ministry to become rich and famous. We have a ministry, both of us and many, many others, fine, wonderful ministries out there are, are doing what we're doing because our heart breaks for 
for the people like in, in Maui, who may have, not all, but m many may have been pagan, and now that not only did they die a terrible death, but if they didn't know the Lord, they have all of eternity again. How long is eternity? There is no end to it. No end ever, 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 ever. You want to spend that time with the Lord Jesus Christ in eternity in what's known as heaven, perfect environment, um, no diets, no depression, no crummy job to go to. It's just going to be one glorious time that never ends. Amen. And you have to name the name of Jesus Christ to be spending eternity with us, with Tom and me. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and forgiven. Praise the Lord. That is the message that we have. Jan, we covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. Do you have any final thought? I mean, that was a pretty good thought that you just posed <laughs> I there. don't know how I can come yeah, up with I don't with know if you can come else. up with anything, anything more than that. That is the well, most important thing, but yes. Your audience pray for those, those who are sounding the alarm. That's all I can say. I don't know that your audience knows some of what we go through um, because we're trying to wake up the remnant and wake up the unbelievers and we pay a bit of a price for it. I just ask, personally, I'm going to ask for prayer. If you think think of me, just pray for uh, pray for good health and pray for encouragement and, and for Tom as well, because I'll tell you, there's a price to pay to be on those front lines. I wouldn't trade it for anything, Tom. I would not trade it for anything. But there are some days when I say enough's enough. Uh, I'm ready to go. Yeah. You know what? I totally, I totally agree. There's times I think, oh, hey, why did I say yes to yeah, this calling? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? And absolutely, prayer is the most important thing. Jan, I'm going to pray right now. Good. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today. Uh, I thank you for Jan and her faithfulness to you. Pray for your protection upon her, your strength for her, uh, your perseverance for her until we are called home. And for all of everybody watching this right now or that will watch later, Lord, minister to them. Fill them with your peace, your joy, your strength. Help each of us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, until we hear those words come up here. Mm. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, so much thank for you. taking your time out. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the not-too-distant future. You will.